Welcome everyone, Costine here with a discussion about Warno Army General, an essential campaign guide covering some of the things you need to know about how to tackle this. Now this is a campaign I started, I fought the first battle manually, you can check the video linked at the end of this one, I charged with the Brallies over here. This is a battle you're meant to lose, or at least have a draw, I won it, the first one. This is the second one on the same turn. And I just want to go over some of the things that you need to know over, he uh, over here. Now, you can auto-resolve your way to victory. And in fact, I'm probably going to demonstrate it in the purpose of this video. After I won that first battle, though I've actually played the campaign here with a situation where I was able to auto-resolve every single battle here. It's not the most ideal outcome. And I do believe that you can't necessarily achieve the best result. Unless, um, unless you're willing, serious risk of being uh, you can't achieve the, the very best result unless you're willing to fight battles manually. Makes perfect sense. So here's how this is going to work. You will start with certain units on the campaign map. So if you're playing the East German, your East Germans, you're going to start with a bunch of um, infantry or motorized regiments or battalions rather. So you have battalions. Each unit over here represents a battalion, part of brigades, regiments, whatever. They have various companies, and these companies have various units. So over here we have a bunch of T-55s, each German T-55s. And since this is uh, the Cold War, one of the mentalities that the Soviet Union had in the Cold War was let us put anti-tank missiles on everything. And that is exactly what they did. Now over here, if you're really good, if you really want to, you could fight these guys to a standstill. But here's the thing. Holding territory is important. Right now, I there are two critical locations. So there's Alsfeld and then there's Bad Hersfeld. Let's talk about objectives. So your campaign objectives are to hold these territories and reach a certain number of points. You will lose if the pact reaches 60 points. You will win if you reach 50 points. Everything else will be a draw, basically. Now, what kind of victory you get? Like minor victory, major victory. I haven't gotten a total victory yet. Uh, but the kind of victory you're going to get does depend on the kind of casualties you're able to inflict on the enemy. I believe that there would be something like a total victory, like in previous games, Wargame Red Dragon did have something like that. Um, I've only been able to achieve a major victory so far, but keep in mind I did not resolve quite a lot. <laughs> like, I've played campaigns over here where I didn't fight a single battle, or I only fought one. It is doable, it is fun. Obviously, the main point is to fight battles. Uh, difficulty design-wise, it does feel like the enemy does get an experience boost compared to you, like just a bit more experience compared to you. And if you're playing against them, they get more experience than you, which does affect the strength that they have in their units. So the units are, the strength of individual battalions over here is dependent by the units, of course, and the experience of those units. Bear in mind, you cannot replenish battalions, so all you have here is what you're going to be dealing with. Maybe some other campaigns will have that replenishment, but regardless, you do have a system over here where you want to gain a certain number of points. But it's not just about holding on to certain territory. It's also about defeating the enemy. So every enemy battalion that you defeat, especially if you're able to completely obliterate them, every single one of those battalions will give you points. You need to get to 50 in order to win playing as NATO. You need to get to uh, 60 if you're playing as East Germany. Now, one of the things you can see here is that in a couple of turns, we will have various groups ready. So there is a, a battalion over here, a Panzer Grenadier battalion over here that's going to be ready in two turns. A battalion over here, a small battalion, a really, really small battalion that's going to be ready uh, soon enough over here. That These guys really don't have that many units. So this, uh, this battalion over here is not important. But in five turns, you're going to have... Uh, you're going to have a battalion of the 5th Panzer Division over here. So this is really, really, really good. Because the reason these guys are really good, you can see that um, every unit that you do have has an attack and a defense. Basically, this 13 attack and 11 defense means this unit is really good. The 3rd third, um, Battalion of the 11th Cavalry uh, Regiment that you start with, they 
are the most powerful unit you, st you have in this entire campaign. So you want to keep them alive, though it's not necessarily crucial that you do so. You can win the campaign even if you lose them because you do have these free tank battalions that are coming over here. One is 13, another one is 13, one is 10. Then you have some support, then you have infantry or rather artillery battalion and anti-air battalion. You also have air support over here. I d you do start with some F4s air to air, air to ground that you're working with. And then eventually towards the very end, you will on turn nine, you will get access to reinforcements from the 13th Panzer Brigade that's gonna show up over here. So you might think like, oh, what I need to do is fall back on Altsfeld and hold it at all costs until reinforcements arrive. Why? You don't need to hold Altsfeld to win the campaign. And point of fact, trying to hold on Altsfeld might actually get a lot of your precious units, your elite units that you wanna keep alive killed. No, it's actually gen uh, quite far better to abandon Alsfeld because you know your reinforcements are going to come the next to it. Our means of and, and so you can just let the enemy take it measures. and then the enemy will be in a prime position the for your reinforcforcements to just absolutely annihilate them. The now you do get the choice. There is hardly any radio contact. Which unit should be deployed urgently as reinforcements? You, you do get some choices at various points to get certain reinforcements. So for, uh, for instance, over here, I can get an auxiliary battalion or I can get an artillery battalion. I think I'm going to go with the artillery, artillery battalion over here. And artillery battalion 22 are now available in Homburg. And yeah, we're going to get them over here. And I'm going to let the enemy just march over here to Altsfeld. Even if they do destroy this unit... Again, it's not really something I'm concerned with over here all that much. Because they're just going to leave themselves in a very, very, very exposed position over there. Panzer Grenadier Battalion 142 has deployed in Schwalmstadt. They are ready for battle. Yes, good on them. So over here, we can see that I am... Like, the way artillery battalions work, there is an envelope. So... You can see that when you attack a unit, when two units meet on the battlefield or you prepare an attack, you can bring units that are like near it to attack. But you only have so many battalions you can bring in a fight. So over here, I can bring these two battalions. So you've got main assault, main uh, battalions, then you have auxiliary battalions, which I don't have. You can bring artillery support, which I do absolutely have in this particular situation though maybe i won't bring up no i think i will yeah i'll bring in everyone including the artillery and that should yeah that will wipe them out so suddenly all of these units that you see over here they're in a very vulnerable position and i will lose out Al alsfeld right now but it's not really something i care about that much honestly yeah as you can see we can even get the draw by sending an air support. The way air support works is you have an airfield right here. Okay, let's just auto-resolve that. We'll take a bit of damage, but it's not really important. Now, they're trying to do to encircle the me. West German territorial reservists of VKK 442. We're going to fall back. To defend Alsfeld. Now, I'll explain how movement works in just a second. But over here, launching an attack, total victory, we've eliminated the, uh, or we've done quite a bit of damage to the enemy artillery. We're bringing in our own guys. And now we should be able to eliminate them over here. Like, you've got armored, but, uh, armored units. Use them. <laughs> I can't stress this enough. You've got armored units use them <laughs> use them as they should you've got mobility on the battlefield you've got that capability don't sit on your ass not using it because that's one of the main strengths that you would do absolutely have in this campaign the is, usaf report grim reapers at the ready sir it is obviously some something that you should t be taking advantage of in the best possible way so for instance over here we're just gonna move over here and you can, you can see that each unit has a certain number of move points. Okay. You need to have... So I'll explain how attacks work. 
you need to have at least four four points in order to uh, to attack so you can see that over here I have those points I am attacking I've eliminated the enemy unit and then since I have a couple action points here as well we should be able to eliminate all these units and suddenly the road to Bad Hersfeld is open and they got nothing to stop me now artillery can support you if it's in a certain range so you can see that this it has this radius same works with air defense so if yeah if you have units in a certain range general the panzer brigade 14 can finally deploy in full we now have a real chance to control Alsfeld. and general our forces have retaken Alsfeld. and this is the important bit that really determines victory See, you have this zone of control. Blue for yourself, in this case, red for the enemy. Units within that zone of control obviously have support, right? Like they have logistical support. But if you lose logistical support, well, suddenly things are going to get very ugly for your guys. So my intent here was to cut off the enemy supply line. And now, since I've done that... They've been, they're being forced to retreat, or else they'll be obliterated. So I'm using a cavalry battalion as a cavalry battalion. Now, they've gotten their supply lines back in order. That's not really a problem, because uh, we'll just cut them off again. And we'll take that objective. This is how you win this campaign. Like, it, regardless of how much you want to fight a battle or not... What is important here is not that aspect. We liberated Bad Hersfeld, General. The enemy's offensive hasn't only been derailed, we beat the enemy back to the starting line. So that's, that's really what actually matters over here. It's not a question like, oh, I'll just fight the enemy head on. You can, if you want to, undeniably so, you absolutely can. But is that really the most important thing? Or... Is it more important to cut their supply lines, take the territory? Remember, the goal is to hold Alsfeld. The, rem the goal is to take this bit of territory and drive the enemy away from it. So right now, turn 7, we got the, pan the 13th Panzer Brigade coming in soon enough. The 3rd Battalion of, the, of my Cavalry Regiment right here. They might get their supply lines back in order, sure. But we can cut them again and again and again. And I'm causing so many issues here. General, USA, the 509th and 511th Tactical Fighter Squadrons are ready to deploy. I'm causing so many issues, it's not even funny over here. <laughs> and now their supply lines, again, are cut. We're pu pulling... Uh, put pushing the artillery closer and getting all right and they're just finished they got nothing to do now units will move faster on the roads than they would otherwise that is certain so your movement range you need four points to attack if you don't get four points like you can see over here, this unit is the only one that can attack because they got five points. So if we attack over here, we eliminate the enemy artillery group. And you can see my unit here is down to one point. So you got to balance it out. Like what kind of terrain do you want to go f uh, f uh, through? What kind of uh, choices do you want to make with respect to that um, in this particular in this particular campaign. Now, over here, I might just be obliterated <laughs> because, yeah, every tank regiment of the enemy is just marching against me. Or they're just trying to retreat General, so desperately. General, the Panzer Grenadier Brigade 13 has made its way I to may them. have to fall back right there because, yeah, they're... Um, they're really trying to get themselves out of that particular situation.
Although, we can send an air support and get out ourselves out of this affair. And get in more air support over here. Now, with regards to calculations, you always got to remember. And now I call in the Panzer Brigade 13 to really help me out here. I mean, I've won. Like, that's not even a discussion. Like, over here, I've won. The question is, how successful will I be in that victory? That is the only discussion over here right now, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Because, like, there is no chance that these guys are able uh, to prevail. Cutting the enemy supply lines, just neutralize them. And we can keep bringing in air support. Until they do submit. And just keep using the artillery, fighter jets, some of the artillery. You, and you get total victory, which total victory will typically eliminate enemy units. But over here, I might have pushed myself a bit too much. But you can see that I'm going to eliminate their artillery. Take out their support units. Deal devastating damage. And now it's just their tank battalions that are left. And their tank battalions, simply put, do not stand a chance. Is ter and we got more reinforcements coming in in the... 13th Panzer, uh, Panzer Brigade. And you can use this strategy in both camps. Like, isolate the enemy, eliminate them one by one, winning like that. Yes, they can do the same against you. That's fine. It's not really too big of a issue. I mean, really, it isn't a big, a, too big of an issue. You can also right-click units over here on the map so you're not guessing like oh which units am I selecting over here no it's very clear which units are you're selecting should I well and while you may not necessarily win every single battle like even a draw like, obviously, you can always fight a battle manually if you really want to. And just units on... Uh, and I guess, like, once they re start releasing the bigger maps, the decision you're going to have to make as a player is like, okay, which battalions do I want to fight when, right? Like, that is going to be a significant aspect of, like, your decision-making in the course of a campaign. Like, how do you deploy battalions? Like, which battalions do you want to fight when? All that kind of stuff. That is really going to dictate how things play out during the course of your campaign. Haven't quite gotten the victory I wanted, but I mean, it's over. So we are victorious. We took the initiative achieving our objectives on time. 
is over. Victory. 52 points. Congratulations, General. We repelled the... And that's how you play Army General. Remember, four movement points to, to attack. You can also tell, by the way, like just by the tiles, right? The more brightly colored tiles, like dimmer ones, you can't attack if you move there. From the brighter ones, you can. Um, cutting off logistics is important. You also get victory points when you take a territory, so remember that. Like, you can lose territory. As long as the enemy is not going to get to it, their points, their, their, their point requirement, it doesn't matter, essentially. Now, of course, the difference between this and playing a campaign properly, between what I just did and playing a campaign properly, is if you're playing a campaign properly, you can win a lot of these battles individually with far less casualties. But be concerned about that. It de does depend on what you're dealing Like, for instance, the East Germans in that campaign have a significant number of missile troops like on their like or anti-tank missiles on all of their tanks so auto resolving maybe with the tanks is actually greater there instead of trying to go toe to toe with them because you may lose a lot of vehicles there it is frustrating like just the way anti-tank missiles work in this game and the ridiculousness of that but all the same that's how you play army general and so the some of the things to concern yourself like remember the artillery radius also with regards to fighter jets you gotta consider like does the enemy have does the enemy have air defenses in that radius? Because if they do, your your fighter jets may be intercepted, and if they get intercepted, there's a, a high chance it might be a successful interception and they won't be able to take apart in a battle. You can only send one fighter jet unit per battle. Now, this is a smaller like what you just saw over there. Let me just load that particular um, particular save or uh, another save. What you just saw over here was a relatively small scale engagement, all things considered. What I would say is going to be different is when you have an entire continuous front line between yourself and the enemy, or mostly continuous. And you're going to have to make decisions. Okay, where do I allocate their support? Where you might have a lot of sectors that are going to go hot, and you got to decide, like, okay, where do I allocate the limited fighter jets I do have? In a campaign where do i allocate because you only have like one, they can only fight in one battle per turn do i dare fight two battles per turn with one unit for instance like if i really wanted to i could obviously fight with uh the third battalion of uh, uh of the 11th acr i could fight and destroy each of these units but it's not really relevant because they'll just uh, flank and obliterate me ultimately and they'll cut my supply lines Cutting your supply lines just means like you suffer from fuel shortages, which I believe does reduce your movement points. So it's like the AI is like the, the AI is abusable right now. Um, I, I mean, it's not stupid, right? Them rushing the objective is not stupid. They won't they won't ignore you either. It's just like you have a significant amount of power if you keep the third battalion ACR alive because. They are the most powerful unit. They can defeat any enemy unit on their own one-on-one. -on -one. It's when they're outnumbered, three to one, four to one, that they might lose. Regardless, Kosin signing out.